you the brother was bad his name is jw and that is the title track from his cd entitled i'll see you soon he is a modern day funk and rollster who keeps true to the uh musicians who came before him and uh he is atlanta based and i've been wanting to have jw on the program for quite a while here on the upper room with joe kelly and today's the day i welcome to the upper room mr jw how you doing jay Doing very good. How are you, Joe? You're coming through loud and clear. and Good, uh, good. And it's just a pleasure to have you on. Uh, we've been, you know, your CD is, is something I bring to every show and just mix up the tracks. And I want to thank you first and, and foremost for, for giving us the gift of your music. Well, thank you also, you know, for even having me on the show. And uh, thanks to everyone listening around the world, also Bridgeport, Connecticut. And uh, it's my pleasure, man, my pleasure. Well, we've been uh, talking the, the past couple of days about the, the state of music, and, and your CD is just a, a breath of a fresh air. I'll see you soon. Um, working on these tracks, I know you've been hard at work in the studio. What was your uh, mindset in getting this kind of music out? Well, the mindset was pretty much um, just doing what made me feel very good and, uh, and watching <laughs> little kids dance to the music you know because sometimes we used to rehearse you know at uh in my apartment which is a patio <clears throat> window right next to the room and it would attract little kids on the porch and they would dance to the music that we would rehearse which was the music that you're hearing now actually you know while one of the songs you just played but once i saw that i knew i had something because uh kids tell the truth you know they'll tell you in a minute if if it's not happening <laughs> they'll let you know and so they must have been uh telling you good positive signs right good positive signs yeah they they were loving it and and i you know it was nice to see the kids dancing to real music and definitely being interested in uh seeing live entertainment opposed to you know, just someone with a turntable, what have you. It says it's educational also. Now, now the trick is, my question, I guess, is did you get any of those youngsters in to, to start playing the drums, or are they still hooked on the turntables? Well, actually, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. It, it was always two or three little young guys wanting to play. I, I let them play a couple of times, but they were really, you know, being very persuasive <laughs> to get me to uh, let them play on the real drum set, which uh, I thought was very nice. And, 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 you know, it's there for them. You know, if you introduce it to them, you know, they would uh, uh, be attracted to it just like anything else because a young mind is always curious and uh, trying out new things. Now, let's go back to when J.W. was uh, growing up in Michigan. How did you get into uh, music? Well, actually, I, um, <clears throat> of course, by Motown, being in Detroit, and uh, I'm the youngest of uh, 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 four, four other siblings. And my older brother, you know, he played music a lot back in those days. He had the 45s, and, of course, he couldn't wait to get his paycheck every Friday to go buy about 12 or 15 45 <laughs> <laughs> yeah but in any case you know and and so you know by by Motown being there you know Detroit was one of the first markets that would get you know the new music and of course the Motown review and I was introduced to the review at an early age I went with my brother I was around nine years old and once I saw the pandemonium in the uh, Fox Theater at the time, uh, it was very exciting, and 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 it just seems like it never it never left me. Uh, what did you take specifically from uh, that Motown sound in, in your songwriting? Any anything in particular? Uh, well, the ly lyric lyric wise, you know, being able to try to tell a story, you know, to tell a um, a short story, a positive story. Uh, something that will, you know, inspire you. That's what I basically could say that I've took from Motown. One of the things that, you know, they did very well was very good songs, very good songwriting. And then, of course, you, you got your indoctrination into the uh, the P-Funk song yeah. uh, via, via one of your sisters, right? 
Yeah, uh, my sister Debbie Wright, she was um, working, um, doing sessions at an early age. Uh, back then, you know, uh, girls 14, 15, uh, put on a little makeup and get the false ID and get in certain clubs. And I think she met George and them uh, working at the 20 grand. And uh, from there, she started singing with the guys in the studio. And one thing led to another. After a few years went by, she um, was one of the first girls with Parliament, you know, on the first Mothership World Tour. Mm -hmm. And that's how I became to know George, Bernie, uh, Ray, uh, Mike Hampton, and the rest of the guys. And I think that was, I think I met, I met Bernie and Ray I think it was like in 1969, man. Wow. Yeah, I was a very young kid, about nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so uh, of course, we're speaking of uh, Bernie Warrell. Bernie actually um, has been in the studio here with his keyboard, so you know no, he, he's a he's a true uh, true nice guy. And uh, it'd be nice if you guys could hook up for something. That that well, would be sweet. Well, hopefully in the future we'll be able to hook up with something. I was fortunate enough to uh, play on his first record, All the Woo in the World. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was able to uh, play on a few tracks. I, I know I played the title track, and uh, I'm not sure. I think it's a couple of more I played, but I was fortunate enough to work on that that particular record. He, he's doing a track um, live in, in his set these days from that record. Excuse me? He, he's doing a track from, from that CD uh, in his live set these oh, days. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah, and Bernie, mm -hmm. Bernie is kicking live, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Woo Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jay, uh, when you were uh, growing up and, and you spoke of uh, being around all those talented people, do you remember the first concert you ever went to? Uh, I would say the Motown Review. Mm -hmm. the Motown Review, it was Little Stevie Wonder, Edwin Starr, uh, a group called The Monitors, Gladys Knight and the Pips, um, um, and of course The Temptations, without a doubt. I believe the four tops. So I, I, I got Martha Reeves and the Vandella. So I had a chance to see pretty much all of them on one stage, and that's pretty much unheard of these days. You so know, I was able to see at least eight or nine acts, you know, in, in uh, one particular show. So, so uh, yeah, that was my first concert. So, so uh, w when is the JW uh, R&B Funk Chronicles book coming out? Well, <laughs> you, you, you've got it all there. <laughs> I heard that. Well, I'll be doing a show in uh, Sweetwater, Tennessee uh, at the um, second annual Freedom Festival. It's uh, by uh, Golden Boy Productions. It's... Um, I'll get that information to you to give to the listeners right. uh, way before April the 20th, but look out for that. And uh, in between that time, I'm working on a new record right now. Um, it should be done, hopefully, by the end of March. I'm looking at wow. the end of March, yeah. So, so, so that's really uh, exciting because, you know, you just released last year, I'll See You Soon, and uh, coming out with something fresh again. Yeah, well, yeah. You, you know, you have to keep moving, you know, especially in my position. I'm an independent record producer, of course. You know, thanks to guys like yourself, you know, we're able to hit a lot of other markets, you know, throughout the world. And uh, once you get a little window in, you want to try to give the people, you know, a little more music. Plus, this is what I do for a living, and I have to keep cutting forever. Right. <laughs> That's right, and we should let our our listeners know that uh, while they're listening to the interview right now, they can go to jw.com, J-A-Y-D-O-U-B-L-E-Y-O-U.com, and uh, they can order the CDs from there, right? Yes, they can. All right. Yeah, all the information they need is right there. And they can uh, put a bid in for the uh, the George Clinton uh, boots. You still there got you them? Go. You there still you go. There you go, yeah, yeah. Put a bid in for the boots. Uh, the boots are from... Um, the album Funk Intellect, Funk Intellecti uh, versus uh, Placebo Syndrome. Right. Uh, the one with flashlight and and Funk Intellecti. <laughs> yeah. But those booths are up on the screen. You know, for those that want a little history, 
you know, give me a call or hit me on the email and make a bid. And uh, it'll be a nice accessory for, for the upcoming live dates you're going to be doing this spring. So, if they want to wear them to the show. Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> right. Hey, you, they can wear them, hey, Halloween, to the show, right. to the moon, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, wherever they want to go. I mean, they're, they're, they are in very good condition also. Right. I must say they are in very good condition. And that's a great part of history. Yeah. You know, those that, you know, would like to have that piece of history. Um, I'm willing to part with it. So JW.com, and, and we're going to get into a, a track off the CD. I'll see you soon uh, right now. This one is called Hurts So Bad. And, and what was going on in the studio uh, with this track? Well, what was pretty much going on with that one, uh, now I'm playing uh, clavinet and drums on that, that song, of course, the writer. And uh, we pretty much just laid it, listened, Got an excellent horn player named uh, Eric Armstrong. Actually, the late Eric Armstrong. Unfortunately, he passed early last year. Uh, and fortunately, I was able to get him on these tracks, you know, forever. But yeah, we just, that's that song. You know, I had that song for a while. And uh, just one day, you know, listening to it and replaying it, just happened to come up with some nice lyrics and took it from there. Okay, we'll check it out right now. J.W. is my special guest here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly. Pleasure to be with him. And this is from I'll See You Soon. It's called Hurt So Bad. J.W. will be back in a few moments. So bad, and you can get the full version on the CD as well. And guess what, Funketeers? We welcome back to The Upper Room with Joe Kelly, Mr. J.W. You still there, Jay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and it's great to have you. And how, how's... um? How's the Atlanta live music scene and radio scene? Well, it's pretty much like um, pretty much any major city. The now the live entertainment is it's entertainment uh, pretty much all week around here in Atlanta. You know they have a variety of uh, live music. You know from uh, jazz to alternative to blues. You know you can pretty much find whatever it is that you're looking for here. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty consistent on the entertainment thing. And, uh, of course, you are going to be looking forward to taking uh, your band out this spring. And uh, we talked about the Tennessee date, right? Right, right, and, right. Um, People can go to your website, JW, and uh, people, if, if you want to get in contact with JW, he is an independent artist, so uh, you can hit him up with an email or a call. All the info is on the site, and uh, definitely uh, get in contact with him. I'm sure the band is uh, definitely going to be uh, going to be live. Be smoking. That's right. And, <laughs> and, and you are a multi-instrumentalist. Um, why don't you let people know exactly what you play? Well, I play, um, you know, drums, of course. I play percussions. I play keyboards, play a little bass. And that's that's pretty much it. And, and do the writing and the singing and uh, the arranging. But uh, that's pretty much what I do, you know. Now, what happens on stage when, when of course, you can't play everything at once? Oh, well, on but, stage, and, I, I'm pretty much playing keyboards, uh, singing, and playing percussions. All right. And, of course, running around and getting the crowd into the music. Right. Letting all your, all your energy out. All yeah. the energy out. You, <laughs> you, you know, you grew up on, on, on just the bands that, that set the tone and, and gave us the recipe of putting on a live show. Um, today, we, you know, we talked a little off air about some of the dire straits out there, but there are a lot of great great bands such as yourself your band that that is doing it right um what are, what are some of the ways as an independent artist that you're letting people know that you got a great album and, and uh ready to throw down well you know you kind of do whatever you have to do i mean when it comes to selling your record you know of course you get with guys like yourself i mean i've sold records in chinese restaurants i've sold records in uh, gas stations. I've sold records at music festivals. I mean, when you're independent, you pretty much have to hit the pavement, you know, because, uh, you know, usually independent means uh, you're a little poor <laughs> than, than most record companies, and you don't have the, the big staff 
to help you out in you know the multi uh, the multiple categories that you have to deal with in the business. So you pretty much do whatever it is you have to do um, to get your name out there and um, to get people to your site. Like I say, I keep records on me at all times. I always keep product. You know, if I go from here to Florida or Florida to New York or New York to Detroit, you better believe every spot in between I am trying to sell a record. Right. <laughs> and that's how it's done. And, and until, you know, you get picked up. And fortunately, you know, with the Internet, you know, I'm able to sell records over in Sweden, sell records over in Paris, over in Germany, over in Italy. Um, so... The longer you keep going and, you know, the more you become of this business, it pretty much takes care of itself as long as you keep putting forth effort. See, I think the way you're going, uh, independent artists and myself as a radio show, that is the way it really should be. It's just we hope it turns into a little more easier that, yeah, you know, that you could play and create and, and do that. But uh, Yeah, well, that's the beautiful thing about being independent. You're able to at least write what you want to write without having, say, the executive or the president of a record company to tell you that, no, we don't want you doing that sort of style, you know, because they have really a lot of control over what artists sing and what they don't sing in the industry. And that's one of the advantages that <clears throat> being independent that you have because you can write exactly what you want to write. You know, as long as you can pay for it, you can write it. So, let's see, you record uh, at your home studio? Home studio, All right. Yes. Um, if you had a wish list for uh, studio gear that you want to put back in the home crib, uh, you got anything in mind that you'd be wanting to put in? Oh, man, now that's a, that's a loaded question because <laughs> there's so much stuff out there now. Um... It's hard to say, really, Joe. Right. You know, it's hard to say. Just, I, I'll put it like this. Give me something that works. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, if it's a $5 machine and it works and it gives you that sound, right? I'll use it. I'll uh -huh. use it. Yeah, you know, but I mean, uh, uh, Mackie makes nice stuff right now. You know, a nice Mackie board with a Mackie two-inch tape. Uh well, a digital Mackie board, shall I say. And uh, that could be about 48 tracks. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, plenty of room, you know, for the uh, booth and the inner room, you know. So it's a lot, but I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on when it comes to the things that they're creating right now as far as to try to give you the best sound that you can possibly get. Now, this might... And it probably is too broad of a question, but I'm going to throw it at you. Um, if you could uh, spend a couple weeks in the studio with, with some of the, the dream performers to collaborate with, uh, who, who would some of them be? Wow. Nah, I would love to work with uh, Steely Dan. Okay, yeah, that would be nice. Uh, I would love to work with... Um, Wow, that's a lot. I would love to work with, say, Tina Turner. Mm -hmm. I think uh, she would be nice to work with. Um, of course, uh, anybody, like the guys I've been listening to, like I would love to do some stuff with, say, with Seal. Seal would be cool. Uh, um that's who I can think of off the top of my head, you know, but it's a lot of people that I would love to work with. I mean, I just love music, period. Right. So it could be a country artist just as much as it could be a jazz artist, you know. Um, I mean, just self-expression. It's a good feeling to hear anybody's self-expression if it's coming from the heart. So J.W., uh, besides being a, a singer, songwriter, musician himself, is, is a talented producer, and I know you could put put some spark into those artists you mentioned beforehand oh yeah without yeah. a doubt right brand new brand new oh yeah i'd love to do some stuff with janet too janet would be nice that's right she yeah. could take a day off from jimmy jam and terry lewis yeah yeah she yeah. did some of this detroit funk <laughs> based out of atlanta right <laughs> uh, how often do you get back to michigan 
Uh, I try to get there. Uh, I was there last year. Uh-huh. I try to get there at least once a year. Uh, if not, definitely every two years. You know, um, I have family in Detroit, have family in New York, family in uh, Florida, and I live here um, in Atlanta with uh, me and my wife. So we pretty much have a busy year just visiting family within the 12 months out of the year, you know. Now, how did you settle on uh, Atlanta? Well, Atlanta, I had did some... um, 12-inch records back in 86 and 87. Uh, A 12-inch single, one was called, uh, one is called Talking to Myself, and uh, one is called You Know What She Said. Actually, I'll I'll have to get some of that to you too, Joe. Oh, yeah. I played that. But in any case, I I came here to one of the Jack the Rapper conventions Mm -hmm. and met a young lady here um, named Eugenia Preston which she, you know, enjoyed the music I had. And she introduced me to a guy named Mitch Faulkner, which Mitch Faulkner was the program director of KISS 104. When they first started, they started here in Marietta, Georgia. And, uh, you know, they treated me very well, you know, different from, you know, the big city of Detroit, you know, with the whole... um, Hey, thing that's going on, you know, and uh, but they treated me nice here. And back in '93, I was doing a little work up in Florida, and after that work was done, I decided to come here because of that treatment that I received back in '86 and '87, and it's been good. Yeah, and and you're happy down there. Got I'm your happy. home studio. Oh yeah, yeah, very happy. That's gotta be real nice to just wake up and. You don't have to go too far to, to lay down that funk. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good feeling. It's, 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 it's definitely a blessing to, you know, have it that close to you, you know, when, when, when that's what you love to do. How about when you, you put the music aside? What, what do you like to do in your free time? Free time, um, I, I walk a lot. You uh-huh. know, I do a lot of walking. Um when I do have free time and a little money to go with the free time, I like going to little sport events, you know, go see some sports, uh, go to the movies, uh, and, you know, get with family, and and pretty much uh, sometime we'll go to the beach, hang out for a week, and uh, relax that way for a while, and it can pretty much, it varies, you know, it all depends on how I feel at the time, and how much time I have free. So why don't you uh, tell our listeners a little bit about uh, this upcoming album? I know uh, it's going to be a little different, or? Yeah, it's going to be different from the uh, last record. Actually, the title is called White Boy Deal. Okay. uh, With, in parentheses, uh, I Want The. And so some people could say it will be called I Want The White Boy Deal. Now, the concept of that is basically just another way of saying that black artists want equality right. in the business, you know, and it's, 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 it will speak for itself uh, once you hear it. And it's a great track. It's a good track. It's a fun track. And that's all it's saying that, you know, come on, it's enough music out here to where most people think that if you're a black artist that you rap, Mm -hmm. which that's what the industry have been pretty much presenting. If it's not that, it's pretty much R&B, you know, slow songs, what have you. And, uh, but it's a lot of black people that grew up on rock and roll, still love rock and roll, you know, love all type of music. And we just wanna show the people of the world that there are some diverse, you know, black folks in the United States that, you know, do things other than rap. And also, they can play instruments still. Right. <laughs> so so you, you're knocking down the myth right off the bat on, on the new CD, right? Right off the bat. Yeah. Right off the bat. And it's basically saying we want the white boy deal. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you know, everybody learn from everybody. And I, and I don't... 
you know, this is not towards any of the artists. Everyone have a right to, you know, be creative. It's basically just still putting us in a certain category, but at the same time, you, you know, they have the white artists do what we do, but they still try to knock us out of the box even from that. You know, mm -hmm. they just limit us when it comes to marketing and and even bigger exposure or even the creative aspect. And the folks doing the knocking down are, are driving in a better car than the, the people creating the music, so that's not right. Yeah, well, I yeah. mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they have a nice car, but what's one thing that I've learned, you know, everyone knows their self-worth, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, and, and money isn't everything, and, um, you know, I wish nice things for everyone, you know, because the real ones last. <laughs> That's right. You know, the real ones will be here, you know, their music will be here, and, uh, you know, that's just how it is. But that's, that's one reason why I made a vow to stay independent, to try to get the word out and to not be put in a certain category that the record company would want me to be in, mm. you know. I mean, it's, they, I have to be free enough to write exactly what I want to write. Now, today is uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Day, and uh, I want to thank you for sending me that uh, uh, the presentation on the email. So I'll ask you a question about uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. You think uh, some inroads have been made on what he was trying to, to uh, approach? Uh, very little. Mm -hmm. Very little. And I only say that to say, but it, 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 it has, as far as individuals have came together a lot better. You know, and that's what it's going to take, like in the beginning, that each individual have to do their part into really becoming a better person, not only to themselves, but to everyone around them. But as far as, you know, I think some of the laws are still being ignored when it comes to equality and just a fair shake, you know, but that comes down to each individual because it doesn't matter, you know, what the law book says, you know, if an ind individual feels a certain way, that's the way they feel, you know, and there's nothing you can do about it. And there's always a way around certain things. So what people I think have to concentrate on is pretty much uplifting yourself first. That way you can always uplift and inspire someone else. Oh, right on by J.W. Yeah. So, yeah. I got to uh, one more time remind our listeners that they should uh, head on right now, if they haven't already, to jw.com, J-A-Y-D-O-U-B-L-E-Y-O-U.com, and you can uh, get some sound sample on the MP3s and order up the CDs and, and just send J.W. an email. Uh, if you just tuned in and missed out on the, on the greater portion of the interview, just send me an email, eastwestdj at aol.com. We'll be re-airing it on the separate internet feed I do on uh, Saturday morning through Monday morning, so 48 hours of JW. That's going to be great. I'll be looking forward to listening to it again. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll definitely be checking it out. <laughs> and I, I got to thank you so much, Jay, for, for uh, stopping by the upper room and, uh, you know, you're going to get continued support with me and, and uh, the rest of the, the creative funksters out there. Well, I appreciate it to the utmost, Joe. I mean, it's, it's definitely very nice of you to, you know, take your time to do this and that you're in it this much to put your energy into it. I appreciate it very much. So we'll, we'll go out with uh, two tracks from I'll See You Soon. This, this track I've been killing. I've been playing it uh, on the Internet show as well. My Stuff. Okay. Uh, followed up by uh, Funk and Roll. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so thanks again, JW. Uh, thank you, Joe. And uh, we're going to have you up here on the East, and, and by that time we'll be we're pumping that new record too. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. You'll be one of the first to get it, brother. Okay, thanks so much, Jay. Thank this is you. Jay. W from I'll See You Soon.